Good morning, folks. We've got interesting news articles, space weather impact expected in just a few hours, and our usual looks at weather as well. So let's get started. As always, over at spaceweathernews.com, we're looking at the calm last 24 hours on our star, like the pose of a golfer after the drive, motionless, watching his launch approach the target. Indeed, after the sun took a swing, we're seeing much quieter conditions in the solar flares, although we do see some blue positive polarity developing near the rear of that grouping as it heads for the limb. Something odd, NOAA took down Discover for the CME impact and have gone to their backup reader, ACE. This displeases me due to hours-long data gaps. They better fill in with ground station tracking changes to go along with it. But all is calm right now in geospace and the magnetosphere, but we do expect the CME impact to Earth later today and probably driving geomagnetic instability. You will recall from yesterday, the last bit of their Enlil spiral is wrong as well. We'll be taking the coronal hole stream right after the CME, not seeing decreasing speed through the 17th. The coronal hole crossing here not only sets the elevated earthquake watch, but also will impact with its solar wind no later than Friday, but probably tomorrow. Let's come now to the ground where an unusual swarm is hitting a volcanic region of the Azores Islands. Scientists furiously monitoring now, and that occurred as a mud volcano came to life in Trinidad. Their larger-than-average quake this week was associated with it. We've got our second subsurface tsunami generation article this week, but this one is about landslides. I wanted to take the opportunity to let everyone know that while the Canary Islands does present a tsunami risk from landslide to the U.S. East Coast, this trench worries me just as much. Satellite views even show historical landslides, and this would run right up the coastline. Fantastic article out about the Rosette Nebula. In a bit of a cosmic mystery, scientists have long wondered how the central cavity could be so small given the enormous star-forming violence ongoing there. Well, they say it is perfectly plausible if the nebula is not a sphere, or a blob, or even a thick disk, but a thin one, undulating like the solar wind sectors. Well, that's got electromagnetism written all over it. Up next, we've got a great introduction for those struck by recent debris disc stories, almost like someone knew that many of you needed a beginner's course in the subject and kindly did a review of what's out there to learn. It's linked for you below the video. Lastly, folks, we're going to run through some cold and snow records. Igloo Fest, one hopes, was ready for record cold. I know Canada was ready despite this individual's displeasure, and that takes us across the world to where Olympians are dealing with it as well. Also on the heels of Erie breaking their season snow record, Chicago has stretched the system into the longest consecutive streak of days with measurable snow. Folks, we've had a number of videos come out on Earth's magnetic reversal the last 10 days. They are linked for you right below this one. Website members, your 18th Deeper Look episode on the year is posted and observing the frontier is this weekend. For those traveling, please be safe and I will see you Friday night. We've got your wind maps and shots of our star to close. We greatly appreciate your support, and we'll do this all again tomorrow, right here. But right now, it's 5.20 a.m. in the new Valley of the Sun. Eyes open. No fear. Be safe, everyone.